Hi, it's Dwyer. Today is September the 15th, 2017. RichardDwyer.com, keepingitfree.blogspot.com. Because I've been here online talking about cryptocurrency, some of you have asked me to comment on recent developments in the crypto sphere. Right? Let's talk about some of the recent developments. Some are big. Right? First, Jamie Dimon the head of Chase, where I have a banking account, right, came out and said that he would fire anyone who was foolish enough to invest in Bitcoin. Now, it's clear to me that the genius in Jamie's family is his daughter, who is a Bitcoin investor. But let me just point out a few things. First, legacy finance, right? Banks like Chase wouldn't have to comment on cryptocurrency if they had the inherently superior business model, if they had the inherently superior line of products, right? They don't. You know that by the number of settlements that Chase has entered into with governmental entities. Right, you know that by the governmental bailout that Chase had to enter into with the United States government. Right, just understand that cryptocurrency is a competitor to the kind of shop that Jamie Dimon is running. So he's a competitor who is trying to badmouth another market participant. His statements are so mind-blowingly silly that all one has to do is look at what Chase itself is doing in-house and you'll see that they're devoting substantial resources toward blockchain research. Also, just think it through, right? You have Goldman Sachs, another big bank that actually has patents in the cryptocurrency space. You have billionaires like Richard Branson who openly talk about their investments in cryptocurrency. Am I supposed to believe that Jamie Dimon would not hire Richard Branson? If that's the kind of decision making being done at Chase, then Chase is not the kind of authority that I would want to follow when it comes to assessing cryptocurrency. Now let's talk about China's decision to shut down cryptocurrency exchanges. No doubt that hurts cryptocurrency, right? The market caps of cryptocurrency tumbled on the news. That shuts off a lot of consumers, a lot of customers, a lot of traders in cryptocurrency from having easy access to the market. So that's unfortunate. But let's be real here. Capital, uh, excuse me. China is having a capital outflow problem, aren't they? Right? A lot of Chinese money has left the country and is being used to buttress real estate prices in places like Vancouver and Toronto. Right? Just Google this. China has put capital controls in place to try to stem the outflow of capital. Well, of course, something like cryptocurrency that enables people to move money more quickly, more cheaply, and more efficiently is not going to be well liked by the Chinese government, right? They can try to hide the real agenda by claiming that consumers are in danger due to ICOs, right? Just understand that's marketing for some governmental action being taken to shut down capital outflows. Let me also just add that the technology is ahead of the government. I need to have people sit back and just understand that as innovative as the crypto sphere is, it continues to innovate. It continues to get better. So if you look right now at the top 10 market cap, cryptocurrencies, you're going to see that 
you have multiple privacy-centric cryptocurrencies among the top 10 in market cap in the crypto sphere, right? You have Dash, which gives you the option of engaging in confidential transactions, right? They have a private send feature. You also have Monero. As I make this video, Dash is the sixth most valued in terms of market cap cryptocurrency. Monero is the eighth most valued. In other words, you have a lot of people in the crypto sphere who are interested in privacy. Well, now you have zero proof protocol. Now, just within the last few weeks, you've had a major development that might actually enable people dealing in cryptocurrency in countries like China to continue to do so with some level of privacy. You have Zcash, right, who recently announced that they have actually cut down on the amount of memory needed to engage in zero proof confidential transactions. What the streamlining has done is it now makes Zcash a viable way to do transactions confidentially using a mobile device because less memory is needed. Let me also point out too that you have another cryptocurrency, PIVX, P-I-V-X, that recently announced that they have implemented the zero proof protocol. And now when you use PIVX, a third party can't tell where the money's coming from, where the money's going to, and details about the transaction. So with this level of digital privacy, <coughs> with the makers of cryptocurrency recognizing that a lot of their constituents desire increased privacy, you're actually going to have a market-based response to government overreaching from countries like China. Let me close, too, by just pointing out that Ethereum is moving in a direction of increased privacy. Right? You should Google Ethereum, Google privacy. You're going to find out that Ethereum has a lot of good things in the works Right, that include increased privacy. Also understand that not every cryptocurrency exchange was based in China, right? Most are based in other countries. They continue to operate. The market cap in cryptocurrency in general has bounced back. This is even after Jamie Dimon's comments Right, the comments from a very prominent bank official who is so prominent in the United States that there's talk about him running for president of the United States. And of course, the crypto sphere has bounced back from China, one of the largest countries on the planet, one of the largest cryptocurrency markets on the planet, announcing that it's not going to allow cryptocurrency exchanges domestically. Right? As I make this video, the market cap for all cryptocurrency still exceeds $120 billion, and it's on the way up. In fact, Dash, in the last 24 hours, according to CoinMarketCap.com, is up more than 10%. That should tell you that cryptocurrency is not a passing fad. This is rather an anti-fragile ecosystem that's growing and growing, that's able to deal with outside shocks like China announcing that it's not going to have or allow domestic cryptocurrency exchanges, right? So food for thought, also consider that many of the arguments you're hearing are fallacious, right? Let's think it through. There was a time where a horse was the standard mode of transportation. You can imagine when cars were invented, there was probably a brief period of time where horses were still able 
to go faster than cars, where the cost of operating a car exceeded the cost per mile of riding a horse. Well, understandably, because of the different capacities of those two rival technologies, eventually cars got faster, got more fuel efficient, started outperforming horses, never looked back, right? Can go much faster than a horse can go, can go much longer than a horse can go, costs less to maintain than a horse, right? So it is with cryptocurrency. So some of these pundits out there are trying to say, look, right now, right now, Visa has the capacity to do more transactions per second than cryptocurrency. Folks, how long is that going to last? Understand, cryptocurrency is in its infancy. This is the first decade of the technology. It keeps getting better and better. It keeps improving and improving. Just like Zcash has improved their product, just like Pivx has improved the privacy of its product. Just like Ethereum, right? The number two cryptocurrency in market cap is not satisfied and is moving toward proof of stake and increased anonymity, right? You can imagine, it's just a matter of time before cryptocurrency does things far more efficiently than Visa, as it is today with several cryptos. You can send money much more cheaply than you can with Visa, right? So don't go for these arguments where someone directs your attention to a well-established technology that has been around for generations and then says, hey, this technology does things better than cryptocurrency today. Well, sure, there was a time when the horse and buggy did things better than the car. That didn't last. Visa's advantage here won't last. It's already gone when it comes to price. Right? So I remain a big bull on cryptocurrency. I don't see it as a fad. I see it as a groundbreaking technology that is going to take over the space. You know that's the case just by the fact that Goldman Sachs and Chase are devoting a lot of resources toward cryptocurrency, right? And also the fact that some critics, people like Howard Martz, right, after criticizing cryptocurrency, see what's happening, see all of the innovation, see the progress. And understand that their criticism was unwarranted, right? So, yes, Jamie Dimon had negative things to say. Yes, China has shut down cryptocurrency exchanges, right? They can only run for a set period of time going forward, just a few more weeks. Guess what? Cryptocurrency is still standing. It's still there. Right? Even after all of this, it's bouncing back. It's taken these punches and it's still standing upright in the ring. Right? It will be for a long time. I believe cryptocurrency is here to stay. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section to this video. Thanks for stopping by.